A massive investigation this evening into what prompted a shooter to target an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. What we're learning about the victims and the suspects past. Plus, officers here at home are launching their own investigation after they say a man fired at police. What happened to the officer who fired back? And a look at what led up to the shooting. And our frigid and rainy weather pattern continues. How much rain we see coming up. First this evening, Round Rock police are investigating this evening after an officer shot and killed a man in a neighborhood off Gaddis School Road. Police say the 65-year-old pointed his weapon and fired before an officer shot back. KXAN's Blake Devine reports on what led up to the shooting. What was once an active investigation with a heavy police presence here in Round Rock has quickly cleared out as many police and detectives were here for nearly nine hours surveying the scene of what was a domestic incident. Here's what we know. Around 1215 this morning, Round Rock police responded to a domestic disturbance here at the house on Bradford Park Drive. After being called out, those officers left, believing it to be safe. But then they heard a shot fired from inside a home. They say a man was seen trying to leave from the back door. He then turned and fired at the police. They returned fire with a steady stream of bullets, which killed him. We've been assured that nobody else was injured. And again, we don't know what exactly caused the disturbance, but Round Rock PD's assistant chief says callers told them a one-year-old little baby was inside the home at this time when all of this was taking place. The caller reported the disturbance was physical and there was a one-year-old baby in the residence. Our thoughts are with all involved in this incident. Any loss of life is tragic. The officer who fired the fatal shot has been placed on administrative leave, which is standard procedure and practice for incidents such as this. In Round Rock, Blake Devine, KXAN News. There have been three other police shootings in Round Rock in the last year and a half. The most recent happened in May. Police responded to a 911 call of someone saying that they had been shot multiple times by a man outside of their home. When officers arrived, they say the man in body armor began shooting at them as he moved into the woods. Officers fired back, but the police chief said at the time it was not clear if officers shot the man or if he took his own life. We did reach out to Round Rock Police to see if they have an update to this investigation. The shooting victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. A young girl was killed as she was performing in a Christmas parade in Raleigh this weekend. We should warn you, this video is disturbing. An out-of-control white pickup truck pulling a parade float hit the girl who was performing with a dance group. Witnesses say the driver of the truck was honking his horn and yelling that he had lost his brakes and could not stop. Adults scrambled to get the girls in the dance group out of the way, but police say the truck ran over an 11-year-old girl. She was taken to the hospital, but she did not make it. Was it kind of just absolutely terrifying when, yeah, when it happened? we didn't know what the truck was doing because it just came and we didn't know if we were supposed to move or anything. It was, I don't know. Police say the driver of the pickup truck has been charged with reckless driving and other offenses. No one else at the parade was injured. First warning weather with meteorologist Sean Kelly. Happy Sunday evening, everyone. Hopefully you're staying warm and dry. We've got a... Another rainy day out there today and another cold one. Temperatures still stuck in the 30s and 40s for many areas here. Let's take a look at some of the rain right now. It's not widespread, but it is increasing a little bit here in coverage, seeing some light to moderate rain from Llano County up through San Saba, especially in Lamp Pass, is seeing a nice uh, round of rain there. More scattered light rain and drizzle here from Austin northward along I-35, heading towards the uh, Georgetown area. The temperatures this morning again, Freezing cold down the hill country. We started off your uh, Sunday morning here, 30 degrees in San Saba. We're still in the 30s at the hour there in Lamp Passes at 39, 38 in Burnett. Metro temperatures right now into the 40s as well. 41 in Georgetown, 44 in Driftwood. Out towards the east here, 47 in Giddings, 47 in Rosanke, Muldoon at 48. So it is a chilly kind of winter-like feel out there. And uh, you bet you'll need those uh, heaters and car heaters, as well as your house uh, running 
because the temperatures through the next couple of days still into the 30s and 40s for lows here. Hour by hour forecast for tomorrow, again, stuck in the 40s here. We should be at 70 degrees for high temperatures, so unseasonably cold to add to that. Rain chances ramp up overnight, especially into tomorrow morning. We'll talk about more of the timing of that and how much rain you could see coming up in first morning weather. All right, Sean, thanks. Jobs numbers are in, and Austin is faring better than the state and the nation. According to Workforce Solutions Capital Area, the Austin Metro's unemployment rate stands at 2.8 percent, while the state of Texas is 1 percent higher at 3.8. Nationwide, the rate is 3.4 percent. The Austin Metro added about 14,200 jobs between September and October. That job growth is in industries including leisure hospitality, manufacturing, and professional business services. There is a new push to collect more accurate data relating to maternal deaths in Texas. A Houston lawmaker filed a bill to require reporting certain maternal mortality information to the Texas Department of State Health Services. The bill also calls for creating a workforce or work group rather for a maternal mortality and morbidity data, regis data registry. The information helps to track pregnancy-related deaths and find trends, rates, and disparities in those deaths. Similar bills did not pass in previous legislative sessions. A 2019 KXAN investigation dug into reasons mothers died during pregnancy or after giving birth. It found the exact number of women dying isn't clear due to data collection errors. The Salvation Army says they've had a huge uh, surge in requests for their help this holiday season. We're taking a closer look at why the need is great this year and how you can assist. A spectacular day here in the Bahamas. The basketball for Texas, not spectacular on Saturday. And now they have to take on a top 10 team in Louisville this evening. I've got more on that coming up. A gunman opened fire at a Colorado Springs LGBTQ nightclub late last night, killing at least five people and injuring at least 25 others. The suspected shooter was injured in, in the incident and is now hospitalized. NBC's Dan Shinneman reports. It was a busy night at Club Q before midnight. That's when the shooting started. I was on the dance floor and I heard shots. I heard four to five shots ring out. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was the music. Authorities say a lone gunman walked into the LGBTQ night spot and opened fire and began to move further into the club. At least two heroic people inside the club confronted and fought with the suspect and were able to stop, stop the suspect from continuing to kill and harm others. We owe them a great debt of thanks. At least eight lives lost, more wounded, even more jolted and heartbroken. Shaking, crying, fearing for our lives. I'm thinking, like, at any second, this man could just bust through the door and kill us if he really wanted to. The suspected gunman now in custody, facing multiple charges. The suspect has been identified as Anderson Lee Aldrich, a 22-year-old male. At least two firearms were found at the scene. The gunman's motive remains under investigation. The morning has just begun. Our hearts go out to the victims and their families who are bearing the weight of this horrific tragedy. A tragedy that has left a community consumed by grief. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. And many in Austin's LGBTQ community are reeling. Statements from Austin LGBT Chamber of Commerce, Texas Freedom Network, and LGBT businesses have condemned the violence and commended first responders for their response. The chamber said, quote, the fight for equality is not over, and we echo Senator Bennett's statement that we must do more to protect the LGBTQ plus community and stand firm against discrimination and hate in every form. In Georgetown, Hope United is a congregation with strong LGBTQ roots. Following the shooting, Pastor Rene Slatiper said his congregation is calling for allies to check on their LGBTQ friends and loved ones, as well as demand stronger protections. I would say that with the uptick in violence that we do continue to see, it should be a cause for alarm, not just for LGBTQ people, but for allies and all people who want the safety and respect and dignity of all people. 
Today is Transgender Day of Remembrance, honoring the memory of victims of anti-transgender violence. Hope United will host a public vigil at 6 tonight on Southwestern University's campus in Georgetown. Well, if you're looking to help families out this holiday season, it may be, it may be more needed now than ever. The Salvation Army has a record number of children signed up for its Angel Tree program ahead of Christmas. Jayla Washington explains why so many Texans are in need. The Salvation Army in Austin is in a new, bigger warehouse this year because they needed more space to house toys for about 11,000 kids who they're giving gifts to this Christmas. That's 4,000 more than they helped last year. Being a youngster myself, we grew up on the basically where my clients are now. Benny Rivera knows how families and children struggling this holiday season are feeling because that was his story growing up. Just hoping that we actually get presents or back then we were just hoping we get food. We've had an explosion in request. That's thanks to inflation. Area commander for the Salvation Army, Major Lewis Reckline, tells me. Times are hard. That's why Reckline says the need for volunteers is greater this year than ever. The partnerships here are huge. And we think that through the partnerships, probably about 8,500 children will be taken care of, which leaves us to have to worry about the, the last 2,500. So the infants goes through 12. Employees like Rivera and volunteers are working around the clock to try to get together packages for families. The most important message in all of this, though? Just knowing that somebody's out there trying to help. That's what this is all about. And take it from Rivera. It's something that may add a little sparkle, a glimmer of hope that families will never forget. Jayla Washington, KXAN News. It does take a lot of help to help out all of those children. And if you would like to adopt a family or volunteer, we've got details about how you can get involved at KXAN.com. And our frigid winter-like weather pattern continues on for at least one more day. Today, look at this, 47 degrees was our high temperature. That was it here at Camp Mabry. Again, we should be into the lower 70s for this time of year. One more day of this brutal, brutal cold weather as we're going to transition to some warmer conditions for Thanksgiving. I'll have that for you, plus those rain chances coming up in First Morning Weather. An Austin institution is getting all spruced up for the holidays. Volunteers and employees gathered at Don's Depot on West 5th Street today to put up Christmas decorations. The general manager of the piano bar and Honky Tonk says the tradition started around 40 years ago when they put up a tree and a few decorations. Well, it's grown into this over the years. Everywhere you look, there's some holiday cheer. It's a celebration that spans generations. Some of the same folks from the first day this bar opened still come here, uh, but a whole new group of, of younger folks has started to embrace the depot as well. And that's a lot of the people that you see here today just having some fun and, and bringing light and color to the place. Don's opened 44 years ago. It came close to shutting down permanently during the pandemic, but with fundraisers and monthly donations from the bar's regulars, it was able to survive. And so does that wonderful tradition. Yeah. So if that doesn't put you in the holiday spirit, then maybe the weather, the weather. will, because yeah. it's, it's very cold outside. Yeah, this is kind of not normal. It's really yeah. chilly. 40s out there. This is something we typically see in the heart of January. So again, this winter chill continues to roll on for at least one more day. And then I think it looks pretty encouraging here, that seven-day forecast where we start to see some changes heading in the right direction. But yeah, kind of just a raw day out there. It's still damp. Still seeing some patchy areas of drizzle, live-looking granite shoals. It's gloomy. Still haven't seen the sun in a few days. We're not going to see the sun tomorrow, maybe a little bit on Tuesday. 
44 degrees Camp Maybrew with the winds out of the north, 9 miles per hour. It's just been the winds out of the north combined with the cloudy conditions that have really just kept these uh, temperatures down here. Uh, seeing periods of patchy rain and drizzle out there, those rain chances will continue to increase through the later part of the evening, especially overnight here. Look at these current temperatures right now, 37 in San Sabbath, 38 in Land Passes, 42 in Fredericksburg, 46 in Giddings, so very chilly. You need the jacket today. You need the jacket tomorrow. Look at these temperatures here, 930. They may actually warm up in a few areas here overnight. Tomorrow morning, waking up to just 40s out there. That's it, 30s and 40s, and we're staying in the 40s throughout the day tomorrow. So we've got one more day in the 40s. And then we slowly start to warm up here. Let's talk about the rain because we're starting to see plenty of that. Mainly just light intensity rain. Some light batches of rain along 77 from LaGrange up through Giddings. We've got some scattered light rain into Williamson County here. Getting rid of the clouds. You can really see some of those areas of heavier rounds of rain. Maybe a little bit of a downpour pushing to land passes. You'll probably see maybe a quarter of an inch or so of rain through the overnight hours. So periods of intermittent light rain showers here and there through 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Overnight, some drizzle, some mist out there. Nothing widespread up until tomorrow morning's commute. We start to see that coverage expand 6, 7, 8 a.m. It's going to be a rainy morning commute, so plan accordingly for that. Give yourself some extra time. You continue to see that coverage still looking pretty healthy here through 1030 tomorrow morning. Through lunchtime, still seeing periods of scattered rain. You notice the hill country a little bit more dry. And then we may even see some clearing just before sunset out in the hill country, but still cloudy sky through tomorrow evening here in the Austin area. Not a big rain event. Some models do show a little bit more than this. This may be undercutting it. I think we can maybe see up to a quarter of an inch in a few areas. And you bet with the rain, mold count continues to increase. So tonight, 40 degrees for a low. The temperature is kind of fluctuating. Maybe cool it off a few degrees, but that's about it. And we don't get out of the upper 40s tomorrow. But look at this warming trend as we head towards Thanksgiving. 68 degrees, but another cold front heading our way drops us down to 65 on Friday. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Dallas Cowboys at Minnesota facing the 8-1 Vikings, and it's been all Dallas. They are dominating Minnesota 30-3, biggest deficit for the Vikings all year. Texans hosting Washington today in Houston at NRG Stadium. Second offensive play for Houston. Davis Mills pass intercepted by Kendall Fuller, and he returns it for a touchdown, 7-0. Washington, they roll in this one, beating the Texans 23-10. to They are now 1-8-1 and on the year. Houston still has not managed to win on their home turf. And it won't get easier for the Texans. Uh, they'll face the AFC East leading Miami Dolphins next Sunday at noon. We'll be back after this. Texas had quite the pleasant trip back to Austin from Lawrence, Kansas after quite a pleasant day facing the Jayhawks. It was an A-plus performance from the usual suspects, main suspect being B. John Robinson, who rushed for a career high 243 yards. But Jonathan Brooks came in late and ran all over the Jayhawks as well, rushing for 108 yards and two touchdowns. Texas dominated Kansas 55-14 as they bounced back from a very tough loss last week. Because a lot of teams, it's hard to get back up off the mat after a couple, after these tough losses. And every time we challenge them, they do it. And as their coach, uh, I was proud of them. I'm very, very proud of them for, for what they showed and the maturity they showed this week to prepare for this game. Uh, and then to come in here under these elements and perform the way they did. All right, Roger is in the Bahamas with a report on the UT women's basketball team as they continue playing the Battle for Atlantis tournament tonight. The scenery here in the Bahamas, spectacular. The basketball from the Longhorns, not so much in their loss to Marquette. And now they have to face six-ranked Louisville. Louisville upset by Gonzaga. And speaking of upset, Vic Schaefer's team against Marquette. Among the stats that has him scratching his head, 25 out of 35 layups missed. But that was only part of the problem for this Texas team that's lost two in a row. I need to practice right now. I don't need to be playing three games in three days, but... This is what we have right now. I've got basically six freshmen out there, our four transfers and two freshmen, and they're trying to learn a whole new way of doing things and being accountable. And, um, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on everybody right now on the floor when you don't have Rory out there to kind of carry you on some of that. That's certainly the frustrating part. Everyone knows how much better Texas would be with Harmon on the floor, not only for her skill, but when she's not playing, other players have to fill roles that they're not totally comfortable with. But... 
That is where they are right now. Louisville this evening. One more game tomorrow here in the Bahamas. Roger Wallace, KXAN News. Proving that not every team can play positionless basketball. Sometimes you got to have a point guard who is a traditional point guard at that, who's yeah. directing things out there. Meanwhile, we got the wrong assignment, didn't we? There's Roger in the Bahamas, 40-something <laughs> yeah. here in Austin. <laughs> yeah, I've been very jealous of him for multiple days. <laughs> of course. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you after the game tonight.